Hello, and welcome to a little video I thought I'd do here. Um, what I'm going to do is to use electricity to etch this image into this aluminum plate. It's actually a fairly thick aluminum plate. I got these by accident. I was supposed to be getting some copper ones, and the seller... <laughs> Um, ain't a mess up. Anyway, doesn't matter. So I thought I'd just play with them and show you what I can do here. So what you do is you get yourself a stencil. Uh, preferably something like vinyl. Um, but you can, uh, you can cut it. I cut these on a Silhouette Cameo, which is a $200, $220 vinyl cutter. Craft vinyl cutter. It makes really good stencils, actually. Um, you can you can see the the details in this one. It's really good. Uh, and then what you do is you have to weed the the stencil. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here and then show you a little bit of that. Um, the stencil. There we go. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. Now I gotta get to where I can see it. <laughs> The stencil is made up. Make sure I get that on camera. Made up of cut lines and parts that you want to remove. So you do like that. Okay. Now you want to remove whichever parts you want to be etched. Okay. So when you get done doing this, you end up with something like this. Okay. Now, I forgot to grab my uh, transfer tape, so I'll be right back. Okay, transfer tape is a tape that will stick to your vinyl and lift it from the backing and then allow you to place it back down on the part that you want to make. So I'm just getting my little piece of vinyl here. Let me back back out. Sorry this is a little wiggly. It's a iPhone on a precarious stand right now. So this is transfer tape. And what we do is it's basically a sticker. And it will stick to the vinyl a little bit stronger than the vinyl sticks to the backing. Therefore, it allows you to lift it off of there. Okay, see this peels off like that. Now, normally I use a clear transfer tape, but my transfer tape got old and so it's not any good anymore. So this one came with the machine and all you want to do is press this down on here and then use a squeegee to just make sure it's attached very well especially the small details don't gouge it because you could move the little lines within the with that's under it so just you know back and forth a little bit it's best to pull rather than to push I tend to do both, especially like there's little tiny spots in here. I will push down on those a little extra. All right, now this is ready. Now we can pull this back and we should be able to remove the vinyl. Okay, I got a line there that's not coming up. Fidget with that and get it to stay down. This is not the best transfer tape. See, like I got the little dot there on the center of that gear is coming up.
I gotta get some better transfer tape to do this. It doesn't matter, this is just a demo anyway to give you the idea of how this works. Oh, and I see I, I forgot something there. <laughs> I forgot to peel the sword out. That's okay, I can do it right now. By the way, this pulling the, the innards out that you don't want is called weeding. Um, there are lots of videos on just that, if you want. Alright, so now I've got this laid out. And so I'm going to take my card and I'm going to place it on there. And I made the outside shape of this just a little bit larger than this. And that's to allow for easy alignment. I'm going to put that on there. Okay. Now, do the same thing again. Push it down. Now this time, the adhesive that's on the vinyl is of course sticking to the aluminum card. And that should be a fairly good adhesive. It, it may want to come up right in the corners, but it should be a pretty good adhesive. Okay, so now that's adhered down there. I'm going to peel off. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not doing that in the camera. I'm going to peel off this layer. See, and that came off much easier, much better than the other one. All right, now I need to clear my work area just a little bit here. So I can get my power supply up here. Now, you need a power source to do this. And uh, what I use is this uh, power supply I got from China. It's actually a really good one. Um, for 50 bucks, it's a really good one. I'll put it that way. Um, they can cost hundreds. But you can also do this with uh, a battery, 12-volt battery. Works good. little motorcycle battery or something all right now what you need is some water that you have dissolved salt in how much salt well as much as the water will hold I basically put hot tap water in here and poured probably a tablespoon or more of salt into it and then um, you need a an electrode of some kind that's absorbent. So what we're using here is I'm just going to use a Q-tip. It's not the best way to do it. Um, professionals use a titanium rod that's got gauze wrapped around it and the gauze acts like the cotton on the Q-tip. Um, but I use what I have, you know. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set I'm going to turn on my power supply and I have it set for 12 volts. So uh, that's that's you can do this at, at lower voltages, but it will take longer to do. Now, what you need to do is pull up one corner of this vinyl and then attach the positive electrode to it. Okay, and then I'm going to take my Q-tip and dip it in the salt water solution, get it nice and wet. Then I'm going to take my negative electrode, and you can see this one's corroded. <laughs> this will corrode your electrode, so that's something you don't don't use a really good cord for this. You something you can replace. I can just replace the end on this one. And I'm going to bite in a little bit to the cotton. And so there should be a good connection there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my power supply. And let's see if I can zoom in here a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and start with this. 
I'll start down here. I'll touch it and I'll start rubbing it. Now I'm looking at my power supply and I'm drawing between two and two and a half amps doing this. Um, again, you can do it with less. I've seen people do this with your average wall wart, 12 volt, one amp. Um, it just is faster if you do it with higher amperage. Um, now, if you go too high, you could end up scorching your metal. What I'm trying to do is get all of the fine detail first because it's the hardest to be sure that it's done. I'm going to go ahead and dip my electrode again. Won't hurt having too much water, but if it dries up, it won't work right. I'm going to just keep going. Now hopefully you can see that the gloss off of the aluminum, as you can see here, where right here where it hasn't been done yet. Let me point with this. This part right here hasn't been done yet, and you can see it's still glossy. Well, the rest of it's kind of white looking. That's the um, that's the effect that it does. And you may even see a little bit of smoke or steam, actually, coming off of the uh, off the Q-tip, off the end of it, because it's getting really, really hot right on the surface where it's etching. I always like to make sure the fine areas like these tips, that I go in there multiple times, keep the Q-tip wet, you can kind of see a, a brownish, blackish sludge forming in some areas. That's the material. That's actually the aluminum that's come off. This circle is one thing that's hard to... Little thin lines is hard to make sure it's been done fully. So I'll go over it separately a few times. I've also seen people use large electrodes, like I say, like they'll cut up a t-shirt and wad it up over a, over a piece of metal, and they'll push down in one spot, and they'll hold it for 10, 15 seconds, and then they'll pull it up and move it. I think that this, my method here, gets a little more even coating, or even etching, I should say. Because if you do it for a long time in one, in one area, the entire electrode is not going to etch the same. So if you then pick it up and move it, you're going to have like little lines, little areas that are uneven. Uh, which, for some people, is what they want. That's fine. That's what you're looking for. Now I'm getting some, some cook on here. That's a combination of the aluminum and the cotton given out. So I'm going to take the other side this q-tip and let's do this a little bit more technically this is done but I like a deep etch so now I'm going to concentrate more on filling in the larger areas and my my vinyl broke right there shoot so that line's not going to look right may have gotten a little hot It'll still be okay. Yeah, I, I screwed up over there, too. Well, this could be a lesson on what not to do. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the power supply now. And I'm going to pour some of this water over this, over my trash can and clean it off. Okay. I just cleaned it off a little bit. Dab it dry. Let me zoom back out here. And now we'll peel off the vinyl. Now it's going to come off in multiple pieces. The big outer piece first. 
I mean these inner pieces. Now I use a little needle tool that seems to be not missing. I'll grab another one here. Now I don't want to scrape these parts, but I want to kind of rub up against them to help them come out. There go. That. Now you could, after you etch it, you could paint the inside um, before you remove the vinyl if you wanted to colorize the etching. There it is. Now that's in there. It's in the surface. You can feel it with your fingernail. So it's not going to come off unless you were to sand the whole thing down. Very simple method. Just some salt water, some metal, and a power supply. All right. If you uh, enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider uh, subscribing and I wanted to at the end of this video you can you can click off it now if you want but I wanted to give a little update on my channel here um, because of what YouTube has done by demonetizing channels that don't get zillions of views I'm probably not going to post as often I will still post uh, I'm going to just post when I feel like it, when I want to. I know I've kind of been doing that anyways. But I had a list of projects that I was going to do just for the channel. And now I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to do projects when I'm already going to do them. I will film them. But I'm not going to specifically do projects just for the channel now. Okay, if that makes sense because um, there's no money in it for me. And if I'm already making a project, I don't care. I'll film it, just like this one here. I uh, I was just doing this to test out this method, and because I got these little cards, I got some copper ones coming in. I'm going to do some really deep etching on them, and I might try multiple methods. And if there's interest, I will go ahead and film those. Um, there are some videos out there already on this, method, but, um, you know, another perspective couldn't hurt. So, I might do a tank version where you put the item in a tank and just let it go for a few hours and then come back and it's already done. Uh, it's a submersion method rather than this kind of method. This one is kind of nice, though, for doing, if you wanted to put a logo on a knife blade or something, go for it. It's perfect for that. Um, and you don't have to have vinyl. You don't have to have a vinyl cutter. Uh, I can't draw for anything, so uh, if you're a person who can draw, you can get electrical tape and use it. You can get uh, shelf liner material, you know, the clear material that sticks down and use that. Or you could get some cheap vinyl and cut it with an exacto knife, you know, just so long as you end up with a, a nice, well-stuck-down design. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.